Welcome. And the question today from Admirable Bus 6 is What occupation could an unskilled, uneducated person take up in order to provide a good, comfortable living for their family? Serious. Hi, this is Derek. I just put the drama llama, Fred, back in his llama pen, so that I can do this quick video for you with some of the stuff that Fred found on Reddit earlier today. Oh boy, let's get ready for some drama. Batman's Underoos answered with I used to be a professional window washer. About 15 years ago. I made on a bad day, 25 bucks an hour. On a good day, about 95 an hour. It's cheap to start up and easy to maintain. Get yourself bonded and insured to be respectable. And you can easily get going for as little as 100 bucks out of pocket for equipment. No degree or higher education needed. My uncle does this in gutters. He can make a grand in a day. Just need a ladder and some basic tools, insurance, and a vehicle. Yep, all those chores you hated doing as a kid and teen. Most people still hate doing it into adulthood, and are willing to pay. Grommel Duke answered with. Look into sewers, not literally. If your local municipality, or some contractors, are hiring then sewer inspection tends to have low entry requirements. And a decent starting salary for the work involved, I've seen roundabouts $15 per hour to start. Yeah, it's stinky and it's hardly prestigious, but it's undeniably useful and honest work. Also, sewer guys tend to be really chill. Edit, looks like I quoted low on the starting wage. People are saying nowadays it's over $20 per hour in most places. Sounds like a great job for me. I love the dark. I love slippery things. I love being naked in the sewer. Well, see the thing is, like, if a wall of water comes through, it's actually pretty sweet to be naked because then you can hold your clothes up. You know, and then that piss and poop just kind of flows over you. It's more refreshing than you think. Cobright answered with. Heating, ventilation and air conditioning is a good one. Lots of demand for help there. You start folding metal ducts then learn furnace installation and repair on the job. Good money to start and very good money after 10 years. Clever80 username answered with. United Parcel Services Driver. I'll make $100,000 this year for delivering boxes. Plus free health insurance. And a pension. And a 401k. Edit, to answer some questions. Work about 50 to 55 hours a week. UPS pays a pension to us when we retire, and we can also pay into a prudential 401k. I'm not entirely sure when my 401k started, maybe when I went full time. I contribute 10% currently. So when I retire I'll have those two sources of income. Plus social security. Plus my veterans affairs disability check, 60% which is like $1,182 a month now I think. It is a dirty and tiring job. I live in Oklahoma, so hot summers and dry but mostly mild winters. 30s and 40s with an occasional ice storm. Back of the truck can get over 130 degrees in the summer. Same thing for the trailers at the hub. You're gonna sweat, and probably lose weight. You'll get black dust from conveyor belts all over you. And you'll be picking out black boogers every day. This is not an easy career path, but as someone who went to college for two semesters and has a felony conviction, what else is there that pays this well? The F, high school counselors were wrong about everything. It's an insanely hard job to actually get though. Your chances of having a STEM degree from a decent field are better than working low wage work at UPS and hoping that someday you'll be chosen for the opening for a position. Don't you have to start out low? Isn't it hard to get the job as the driver? I am a crafty hooker answered with. Does anyone have any suggestions for small women? Everything suggested are trades and manual labor. And while women can do those jobs, they are often looked over in the hiring process. I'm 5 feet 3 inches and 110 pounds. I get looked at and am automatically assumed to be not strong enough to do the job. I could go to a trade school, but that kind of defeats the unskilled, uneducated part of the question. 
and please suggest anything except babysitting. Poop, I've spent a lot of times in crawl spaces and attics wishing I had a small woman to help me. I would have thought that electrician, low voltage data work, or plumbers would love having small people since they can get into places that others can't. Just because women are good at the job, that doesn't mean the good old boys will actually hire them. I swear, half of everything electricians do would be made easier with smaller hands and smaller frames. But no we gotta hire 300 pound tobacco chewing bubba. That made me audibly laugh even though it's not really funny. But bubba got me. Finkelmeyer answered with. As others have mentioned, consider going into a trade. If you're made of strong stuff, I would suggest plumbing. Bonded plumbers are some of the highest paid tradesmen. And the earning potential is going to skyrocket over the next decade. Much like nursing, or probably worse, the largest age demographic of plumbers is reaching retirement age. And there are not even close to enough people going into the profession to replace them. The implication 69 answered with. Waste management. Trash dudes make good money. Kids love the trucks. Don't have to deal with people much. The work itself is extremely physically demanding though, especially in winter. It's mostly done by contractors, so the pay is lower than before. I recommend getting a route involving businesses, and not general households. Way less pickups, easier on the body. I agree. My BF does this. He goes in at 5. And doesn't get off until 5.30 to 7 the other day. He came home at 8. I honestly don't recommend it he says it's like doing a giant road trip all day. So he's exhausted after each day. Plus how hard it is on your body especially in the winter when it's ice. And the cans are frozen you have to hit them out. Maybe other states have it easier. And I think with more experience you can get easier routes though. UK here, I had an agency send me to go with recycling pickup before. It was effing awful, minimum wage, zero job security. And you don't even know if you will be working that day until 4am. Where they tell you to be ready and at work in 2 hours. Brit Unicorn answered with. I wouldn't say my fiancé was unskilled or uneducated. But, he works as a forklift driver for a popular freight company making $28 per hour. Thrust Foothole answered with. Cleaning up crime scenes pays well. Yes and no. I'm in the US. If you own your own business and set your own prices, absolutely yes. But if you are hired onto a company you're looking at around $35,000 to $42,000 a year. At least this was the case when I looked it up when I was living in Utah about a year ago. I'm quoting this very loosely here. The numbers were from one particular company. Roughly translated to about $14 an hour. After taxes to deal with the emotional aspect of death, gore and biohazards. I seriously considered it until I found out how little it pays at entry level. I was blown away that I made more money than people who clean up guts. Roughly translates to about $14 an hour. That's a ripoff. I work in a hotel and I get paid $11 an hour. That's way too low for a crime cleanup job. Just make sure it comes with mental health benefits. Yeah, I work with abatement contractors who also clean up after suicides and crime scenes. They get paid pretty well for the work, they get paid double time. But the job really is hard on them. I've spoken with a few guys who have PTSD from what they've seen. I've also heard how the smell goes through their Tyvex. And they need to rub lemons over themselves in the shower to get the smell of death off of them. It's not a job I would want to do. Nethervex answered with. DOD contractors are struggling for tradesmen right now. My job is literally taking people right out of tech school or off the streets. And teaching them sheet metal slash welding slash pipe fitting. Job security is great and the pay grades are unbeatable by smaller shops. Code virus answered with. Start a little business, tree trimming, lawn work, landscaping. My brother didn't go to college. Barely finished high school. 
started helping neighbors with little jobs like that. We had a bunch of older people in the neighborhood and they knew he was a good person. Then he bought a better mower, then a truck, started to branch out, hired some people. Now he is doing very well and I am super proud of my younger brother. I hope he is more successful than me in the end because he has a heart of gold, unlike me. Dark Pasta answered with. Be willing to do jobs other people won't do. Funeral Home. Edit, Funeral Home was an example, I simply mentioned a job I under no circumstance would ever do myself. Hit man and male prostitute would be two others. Not just for the salary, but also for the benefits. Easy access to grave soil without any suspicions. A friend of mine was a security guard overnight at a funeral home. Walk around every two hours and had his Xbox set up in the office. LOL. Hauling bodies was great money when I was in college and the police academy. Prepared me for plenty of things I'd see. And it paid great. Many times I got paid to sleep because I was on call and no one died. Deleted, answered with. Railroads do on the job training. And you can make a lot of money if you don't mind shifts. Was looking for this. I'm a conductor in Canada, and a lot of people always bring up the hours. They can be brutal, but I sort of got the best of both worlds. We get 24 hours off after every trip. And I live in a ski resort town so I work one day on, one day off in a ski resort town. And make over 100,000 a year with benefits. Every four trips you get two days off. It really is awesome for a single guy with no kids. It's when you start to balance in a family that it becomes hard. I basically just live my life one day at a time with no plans. CKO since 9637 answered with. Along the lines of trades people are recommending, try the jewelry field. You can take online classes through the GIA, Gemological Institute of America, website. And work at a jewelry store easily. You make good money, it's very low stress, usually comes with benefits. And you work with beautiful things you can be proud to sell and be around. With lots of room for more education and therefore higher pay. I will have to respectfully disagree. I'm not sure where you live, and work as a jeweler. But in Canada, it's a hard go with wages topping out at a certain point no matter experience. Benefits are hit and miss because most employers are small or medium sized. Also can be very stressful working with high-end clients and items like gems. That can be irreplaceable if you were to make a mistake. You can do well if you want to go into business yourself in a luxury industry. That requires thousands in materials and tools just to enter. That's after probably a decade working at the bench just to be decent at it. The skills required are pretty crazy just to do basic quality work. Source, was a professional goldsmith for a decade plus. Perhaps in the creation area or craft work of goldsmithing such as the field you're experienced in. However, I am referring the grading, appraisal, and sale of jewelry, precious metals, and stones. Going further is very feasible through auctioneer certifications as well as further GI coursework. Dalek Ponif answered with. Post office. You have to have decent memory and that's it. I'll admit it's a job where the new employees are abused. But once you work your way to regular it's a great paying and stable job. I'll just note that if we are talking about the United States USPS is unionized. And the wages are the same across the country. So if you are in a low cost of living area. Then USPS wages will provide a significantly more comfortable lifestyle. Then in a high cost of living area. Also, note that rural craft versus city craft has completely different wage and benefit structures. Cajun Dog answered with. Whatever you choose, there are several ways to set yourself apart. Stay off drugs. There are lots of these sort of jobs where they are looking for warm bodies to train. Who almost just need to pass a drug test. Show up on time, if not early. Be neat in appearance. Learn basic personal financial skills, budgeting, saving, etc. And finally, just need to pass a drug test. To me this is the most classist BS ever. I have not once in my life had to pass a drug test to make excellent money. Manual labor? 
Guess you can't do anything other than give yourself lung cancer or ruin your liver. Reefer on the weekends to help with the chronic pain and inflammation of being a manual laborer. Yeah have fun at the back of the line buddy. We will take a functional alcoholic over you even though you would be a better fit. Well, there you have it. A perfectly great question answered by a bunch of fine and honorable citizens. Help support this channel by smashing the like and subscribe buttons. And hit that silly little bell as well to ensure you get the latest videos as they come out. Fred is always finding stuff for me to post regularly. So this is Derek signing off, thanks for watching. Good grief, it sounds like Fred is out of his pen again. I think he found more drama for me to share with you. See you soon.